guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a little flip through of this sketchbook. It's not quite, well it isn't finished, but what it does have in it are all of the images that I drew from a 30 day challenge. Actually it was October, um, not quite 31, but there are 30 images in this book that I thought you might like to see. So I just wanted to share with you what this sketchbook is. It's from Royal Talons and it's square. So you can see it's actually quite a small compact sketchbook but opens up to a landscape if you want to use both sides of the paper. So I bought this initially to do some, I think, landscape drawings. And you can see on the first page, I've got a little landscape. But I soon found that I wasn't quite happy with the paper. It wasn't like my moleskin, which is a bit thicker. And I found that, um, yeah, it just wasn't what I wanted. It just wasn't behaving in that way. So I kind of put the sketchbook away and didn't know when I was going to use it again. Um, and then I started doing some food illustrations in it, because I thought, why not? Let's use the paper. These were from actually when I was doing a Domestica Live, and I just wanted to do some quick food sketches. And I actually liked the way these ones came out. And so I thought, oh, maybe this sketchbook will, I will be able to use it again. So as you can see, this is just quite mixed media. And then this is where my October food drawing challenge started. So the challenge that I did was by They Draw and Cook community, although they are now um, change to just they draw but you can find they've got a website if you just google they draw and cook you'll find that there's this whole community of people who upload illustrations based on recipes so it's all food based as I said they've kind of combined their two loves which was they draw and travel and they draw and cook and so now it's just they draw it's definitely a interesting place to go and be inspired, especially if you love drawing food or if even you love drawing maps. And as you can see, those two of my kind of favorite things, drawing food and drawing maps. So anyway, let's go to the challenge. So they set this challenge for the month of October where they gave you a list of prompts for each day relating to autumn or fall foods and you basically would complete each challenge each day. And I scanned each image in, cleaned it up, and moved some bits around, and then posted it on my Instagram account. It was quite hard work to do something every day um, and alter it and scan it in, but nevertheless, it was a really good challenge. So the first day was caramel apples. The second prompt was pumpkin latte. Now I have never had a pumpkin latte, so inspiration for this probably came from Pinterest, um, looking for mugs with the whipped cream, chocolate sprinkles, and then you can see here I added a couple of pumpkins, as well as cinnamon sticks and coffee beans. This page was dedicated to s'mores. Again, something that I haven't had before. I found out that actually s'more stands for some more. So I'm guessing that this is very tasty if you've had it. Um, if you're living in the States, you probably have had this at campfires, um, but they traditionally are made with graham crackers, marshmallow and chocolate. So as you can see, I did a couple here and this is the one that I decided to um, go with on my Instagram. 
This page was mulled wine. So I like, like it when you break down the illustration into the ingredients that actually go into the drink. I think it brings a bit more to the illustration. I also thought it would be nice to add a little bit of foliage as well, just a bit of green, especially because it would go really nice with the red and the oranges. Another thing that I've really enjoyed actually is labelling up things as well. This one was figs and as you can see I did quite a few different figs. I just really enjoyed this one. I actually filmed it as well which you can see on my channel I've added a very short video of me drawing it and creating it and you can then see how I built up in layers as well starting with the watercolour and then adding crayon and then adding pencil just basically building on the layers beforehand until you start getting a bit of depth but also I wanted to kind of keep the element of looseness so that's why you see the pencil I just kind of scribbled on this page is on maple tarts again something that isn't very familiar to the UK but I imagine it's pretty much like a treacle tart that we have in the UK very sticky thick um, insides and then a pastry crust next up apple pie Apple pies are definitely a favourite dessert of mine. I always think of my dad's when I think of apple pie because he used to make it most Sundays for us. Again, I thought it was nice to do a whole pie with a piece missing and then to draw the piece on this side. Here we have chestnuts. This was quite an interesting spread. I really enjoyed this part and then I thought, oh, it might be nice to do some more chestnuts on this side, but I don't know, I didn't find this composition as nice. So you'll see on my Instagram post, it was just this side that I left on and I think I left a few chestnuts as well. But yeah, I rem removed this um, cooking implement. Mm, cinnamon rolls, a favourite of mine. My mum's cousin used to visit us quite often as we were growing up and she was from Norway and she used to make fresh cinnamon rolls in the kitchen. And it was always nice to be able to smell that. Also you'll see in my Instagram post I actually repeated this so that it almost looked a bit like a pattern. This was, I think it was a spicy cocktail, so I decided to go for a Virgin Bloody Mary. So that is you, tomato juice, Tabasco sauce, Worcestershire sauce, pepper, celery, olives, lemon juice. I really enjoyed again this one, especially the bottles. This one pumpkin biscuits now i just didn't have a clue what a pumpkin biscuit was and when i researched it i discovered actually that they looked very much like the scones that we have um, in cornwall and so yeah i just it was you know when it just throws you and you're not quite sure what it is that you're drawing so again i had to look it up on pinterest and find um something that looked like what I wanted to draw. So this spread was definitely a favourite of mine. These are all mushrooms that are wild and I think you can eat them all. I think I remember thinking, yes, they're all ones that you can eat. So you've got just a range and what I like about it is that there's variety. So you've got some really nice yellow ones and some red and then 
ones which have funny names like this one's called fried chicken this one's beefsteak fungus so yeah really enjoyable spread to do these are spices of the season so we've got cardamom pods again i wasn't familiar with how they looked so i had to look that up ginger root nutmeg and star anise okay so this was this was a very fun one as well pretzels and beer and i decided to make a beer cheese dip for the pretzels again pretzels aren't really a uk food so again it's just helpful to find source imagery that will help you draw these things. So again, Pinterest is a good resource for that. Now this is the first of two salads that I decided to draw. Um, I don't think I like this one, so that's why I ended up doing another one. But um, yeah, I think it was just, I, I liked certain parts of it. Like I like really liked this part of it. And then this was meant to be walnuts and pecans and sultanas. And I think it just ended up all looking a bit samey. So I just, uh, I, I finished it, but I just wasn't happy with it. So I really enjoyed drawing this pear. And you'll see in the next spread that the pear becomes the main thing. So I decided to do then a pear and walnut salad. And again, I love drawing these pears. And then um, I just simplified the salad a bit more. So it's just got the leaves and the walnuts and the pears. This one was an acorn squash. I thought it was nice to do the insides as well as the outside. I used a lot of crayon on this one. And we have donuts. I always wonder what's the correct spelling for donuts. Sometimes I see it spelt do nuts and then other times with the GH do nuts. I think American spelling is, is the, the do nuts. I know you meant to say donuts, but just so you can identify the difference. Um, but yeah, another nice one to do, fun, lots of highlights. Sometimes it'd be hard to get those highlights. I always find that you have to underdo it, not overdo it, otherwise you find it gets too tight. Also you can see I use a bit of splatter as well, just to give a bit of texture. Apples. This was a very fun one to do. I love um, just the, I just love the challenge of drawing an apple because there's something about an apple which, you know, is, is quite tricky to get. You've got your dark sides, you've got light sides, you've got highlights, and then, you know, you're trying to make it look really quite 3D and smooth. So this was definitely a fun spread to do. I think I like all of these apart from this one. Don't think that one worked. But you'll see in my Instagram post that I include all of these apart from this one. My favourite apple is probably a gala, although I quite like pink ladies. This one, chai tea. I wasn't so excited about this one. I thought it would be interesting and then I just got a bit bored. This side I didn't include, but yeah, because it's quite a, a drink that is very creamy, be beigey looking, you know, you haven't got those really popping colours. But anyway, it, I persevered with it and I think on the Instagram post it, it looks okay. This one's butternut squash soup. A warming soup. What I liked actually with this was adding the thyme and then getting the colours, so a lot of greens and oranges. 
Now, this one, probably, I think my least favorite of all of them, <laughs> Harvest Corn, just is quite tricky to draw. And I feel like I over, I think I over sketched it really, because there's not many highlights on the corn itself. So yeah, not as excited about this one. And I think I was intending to use this as the, like a background for the corn to go on to, but I just didn't end up doing that. Pumpkin roll. Again, this is a very American dish, food dish. Um, it looks very much like roly-poly or a, like a jam roll that we'd have in the UK, but it, it's definitely but with a different flavour, so pumpkin. I wondered actually how it would taste, whether it be sweet or savoury. Someone told me it was sweet, so I'm sure it is nice. Here we have pomegranate. Again, another favourite um, fruit to draw. Lots of interesting texture on there as well. And then this, this spread, this was a very nice spread to do. Again, veg, fruit, is, it's very nice to draw. You know, if you want to get into drawing food, I would definitely recommend you start with your vegetables and fruit because they're very forgiving as um, subjects. You don't have to go too wrong with it. People can tell what it is. Um, and, you know, adding the little stalks on each of these, again, it's very satisfying. And the colours, again, are really nice as well. Here we have some cakes. Did this one first. Really didn't like it. I think it was just too fussy for me. And, um, yeah, I got too tight in that, in that one. And then I just thought, I'll just do a nice little cupcake with some cream and a raspberry on top. And this one I like a lot better. Okay, so this one was candies. And I decided to choose a candy that we have in the UK and I remember eating um, called flying saucers. So they're like, like little discs. Actually, someone said they were a bit like um, the wafers that you would get at, at church. Um, if you went to a Episcopal or Anglican church, you would get these little white wafers, which when you put on your mouth, they kind of dissolve. And th these are very similar to that, but they have the bonus of sherbet inside. So you get a really, really tingly sensation all over your tongue. And um, yeah, they're quite addictive. So. I'd be careful if you have those. Um, then we have apple cider. Uh, yeah, so again, used Pinterest for just from, for some ideas as to how to present that. So I drew the drink and then I thought, hmm, needs a bit more. And that's where I drew the apples. Now this is the one that you see in my last studio vlog that I'm drawing and you'll see that I started again with the watercolour then added the texture and then added the pencil finally but again I it is a very enjoyable sketch to do got really nice bright colours and then contrasting with the leaves here we have pumpkin pie so yeah, there's bits of this that I really like and then bits that don't think work as well. So I thought of doing some leaves. Um, I kind of did one leaf and was like, nah. <laughs> but what I do like um, is this pie here and I love like the little texture that is on here. And then I like this, this one as well. The, and with a bit of blob of, of cream on the top. This one was campfire cooking. So these are like kebabs, 
quite a complicated sketch this one and it was quite hard to keep this one loose as well because of there being so many different veg on a stick and trying to keep it simple. What I could have done probably is just done one kebab stick and I think that probably would have been enough and even maybe done the fire that it could have been on top of so yeah. Um, now this is the apple crumble cake, this is the first version that I did. Um, a little bit too tight so I thought I'm going to do it again and ended up with this one which I am a lot happy about and just making it slightly bigger just gave me a bit more room to be loose and sometimes that's the case if you go too small it's very hard to keep the looseness and the sketchiness of it you just get too tight so just going a little bit bigger might um, just help you if you're trying to stay loose and I added then the little kettle and a teacup well I was thinking of outdoor spaces so that's why I added it like a tin one. Imagined a tin one being quite nice to have with it. And the colours I like as well of that. So that is the end of that October sketchbook prompt. And just give you a little flick of what I've been doing since then. I've been doing some Cornwall based foods. So I thought that would be a nice thing to continue. So we've got the Cornish cream tea which they have, jam first, then clotted cream. You always have it with a cup of tea. And we've also got stargazy pie. I have never had this though. Um, I've seen it a lot, but I've just never had it. It's, it's um, based on a old legend of a fisherman who went out in the stormy seas to any court fish, brought it back, um, the village that he brought it back to is called Marisol and they were near starvation so he managed to catch a load of fish, baked it all together and that saved the village from starvation. So that is the legend of the stargazy pie. Obviously it's been adapted and it's why it's so interesting is that you've got all of these fish, they normally are sticking out with their heads on the pie so it's very um, memorable and then we've got a saffron bun toasted very nice toasted a bit like tea cakes and then finally we have a Cornish pasty so yeah that's what I've got in my sketchbook and it's been actually a really good challenge to do, enjoyable and yeah it's a, it's a good thing to do sometimes to push yourself especially if you want to work in a different style to participate in a challenge of some kind it just helps you um, get the motivation to do that. I know people work in different ways and for me um, having deadlines definitely helps me to do something like this and also because I was posting it on Instagram, I had a little bit of accountability, if you know what I mean. I mean, no one was really, you know, watching or thinking, oh no, she hasn't posted. Um, but at the same time, I, I guess I had that pressure on myself. So yeah, I'm going to probably work on bringing some of the sketches into a print I think and see what kind of artwork I can make from them. I mean again that's a good thing about a challenge it means that you've got a lot of images and icons that you can use and so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with them and see if I can make something with them into like a bigger piece maybe like a poster or some kind of print and yeah I'll keep you posted on that. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour of my foodie sketchbook and yeah as you can see it's about three quarters full so I'll probably keep using this for food based illustration and maybe we'll look at it again when I finish it completely.
All right, I hope you're well, guys, and I'll speak to you again really soon.